Hey everybody, Danny Rod here. Thanks for joining us. Can a simple change to your takeaway really help you hit the ball straighter and longer? Well, it was certainly the case for two of my students this week. Craig comes to see me hitting a great big booming slice with his driver. Why? Because in the takeaway, he wasn't managing the face. As a byproduct of that, when he finally came back down to impact, the face was wide open and he sliced it. Once we fixed that with a real easy change, he simply hit the ball so much straighter. Then just yesterday, Mike from London comes up to see me. Mike's hitting the ball pretty straight, but he was putting the club in an inefficient uh, position in the backswing because of the takeaway. That meant he had to make all these different compensations in the downswing, which was kind of wasting energy. And as a byproduct, he lost distance. In fact, by the time we finished with just a simple change, we had it look 20 yards to his six sign really, really easily. Now, in this week's training, I'm gonna share with you what we did. I'm gonna share with you exactly the things that you need to be looking for in a takeaway. I'm gonna and show you how to achieve it with three very, very straightforward drills. Before I do though, look, if you're new to the channel, and this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Press that little bell button, next subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Plus, look, if you do enjoy the video, there's a free practice plan in the description box below. I'll also put it in the top comment as well, so just download it. It's complete for free. You don't have to remember a thing. So takeaway, why is it important? What are, we, what are we supposed to do in a takeaway? Well, like any backswing, it has two, purpose, two purposes. You want to return this club face, don't you, to straight, to square, so you can hit much straighter shots. The second thing, you want to hit it a decent distance as well. So therefore, the backswing is designed to, you want to get the backswing in a position which is efficient enough to simply deliver that club straight to that ball and powerfully. What both Mike and Craig were doing, and I see with so, so many golfers, they weren't managing the mass, the big, big lump of metal, and they certainly weren't managing the face. What they were doing was this. They were rolling the face open, so the face was literally doing this, and they were throwing the mass behind them. Now, this has a couple of factors. Clearly, you've opened up the face, so that's obviously a big problem, because if, if the face is open, you're gonna have to now somehow roll the wrists. That's gonna be difficult to time on the way through, so it's gonna affect your accuracy but the mass is probably one of the biggest uh, things. When you throw the mass behind you here, what was Craig was doing, he was reacting to that mass, throwing the mass somewhere back, because obviously if you mass is behind you here, you're not playing baseball, so you're gonna go, hang on, the ball's down there, mass comes over, you come over the top, you swing over the top, and you hit these great big slices. So clearly, if you manage that, might manage this much better, but because he was trying to manage it, he did manage it quite well, hit the ball pretty straight, but that's a lot of wasted energy that he was losing. So, what do we do? Well, I'll show you the positions we wanna get into and I'll show you how we do this. We wanna keep the club as one lever, so we want a very much a coordinated move away. At no stage, look, am I throwing this mass around. This lead arm and club are forming a lever, and I'm not gonna activate that lever in any shape or form. If I activate it here too much, the mass gets thrown behind me and we open the face. So we're gonna keep that lever completely intact here, all right? Now the checkpoints you wanna be looking for. Look at this here, when we get to uh, almost this position here, the club face, look, is parallel with my spine angle. I haven't rotated it at all. As we take the club back further, you'll then see it's completely in line with my foot. These are kind of simple checkpoints, but they are checkpoints. They're checkpoints in time. What we're not trying to do, I'm not trying to achieve this line, which is what I see with so many people. When you try and achieve this line, people start to slide towards it. They start to tilt towards it. This line is just a snapshot in time. The golf swing is an arc. As we're moving it back to here, look, it is a line, but just a microsecond later, it's off that line and it's working up here. So remember that, very, very important. So here's the first exercise. We want to try and work on, for now, managing the face, and the mass. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop, we're going to get a little kink look in this lead arm here. I'm going to literally drop it. I, most people when they're throwing the mass away, the handle gets very, very high. So we're going to push this handle down, get a little kink here, push the handle down. Now from here what we're going to do is just with your lead arm, just simply keep your butt end very close to your trail leg as you move this coordinated motion away with just one hand. Now I've put a T-peg in just as a guide here, and you could do this as well, just moving the club backwards and forward just with your lead hand. After you've done this once or twice, bring your trail hand in, make some movement motions, right? You could do this this way around, or you could do it the other way around. You could take your trail hand. You could simply look at this, 
move the club away. Look, I've got my checkpoint here. Look, everything is parallel with, with my spine. I haven't rolled the wrist in any shape or form. I've literally worked it away as one unit. And then what I can do, look, do that once or twice and then bring my lead hand in. Once I've got a rhythm of this, take it to the top and then away we go. Let's have a look at simply that in action. So I might do a few of these, just kind of get the sensation. One, two, put my right hand in here, get a feel for this, and then away we go. Let's, this is drill number one. So nice and simple shot, it's pretty straight. A bit long, but not too bad, okay? So, we could just simply do that simple exercise, okay? Now, there's one thing, I've got two more drills for you, there's one thing that can get in the way of this, and it's a misconception in the way you move your body. Now, a lot of people who I see do this misinterpret the word turn. Often we try to turn in a golf swing, and watch this. The golf swing really isn't a turn, it's a pivot. When people try to turn, they start to turn their shoulders. This lead shoulder gets high, the right shoulder gets low, and that throws the club behind. It creates this type of action. Turn, and this is your slice. Yeah, very inefficient. Watch what really happens in golf. Golf is a pivot. It pivots, it works in straight lines. It looks like I'm turning, and I am, but its force is going in straight lines. My lead shoulder goes down, my trail shoulder goes up. I aren't turning so much. Does that make sense? So look at this. It's a pivot, yeah? And I believe a pivot is different to a turn. Turning is this. Great maybe if you're playing baseball, but in golf, we're going at a golf ball here. Now this makes a big difference, doesn't it? Because if, if you're trying to do this movement and in, you're also trying to kind of turn, it's, you're almost, almost certainly going to do this. So what we want to do now is, is imagine doing the same thing now with a pivot. Suddenly look, the club is going to work more up in position versus around because you're seeing the club in a pivot, or the swing should I say, in a pivot here. Now, so just even that alone, doing these exercises here, just start to imagine the club now, watch this, when I get to here, look, if I see the club as a pivot, what's going to happen, the club's going to work up a bit more now, as opposed to, watch, around, yeah? I'm working here, look, and then I'm going to work it up as a pivot and then back down. Let's have a look at this in action, nice and simple. Should be nice and straight. Looks like I've got a bit too much club. Yeah, a little bit long. Not too bad though. Okay, so simple takeaway backwards and forwards. Now, drill number two, because not everyone can feel the same drill. Sometimes you've got to change it up a little bit. So drill number two has exactly the same purpose, but you might prefer this one over that one. So drill number two, grab a line mystery, old garden and cane, whatever you want. And same principles, right? So you still imagine the entire golf swing as a pivot. If you want to learn more about this, I'll put it in, I'll put it in a description um, here and in the iCAD above, just on rotation. So all we're going to do here, look, I've put a cane on this side of my body and I'm going to keep it attached to my body, okay? So look at this here. I'm simply making a swing look and all I'm doing is keeping that alignment stick attached to my body. If I allow my lever to activate, it's going to come out. It's nice and simple. So I'm keeping it attached, get a feel for that. Again, just do one, one of them. And then from here, look, from this position, I'm going to allow it to now, from this, it'll come off my body. I'm going to pivot up and hey, presto, now we can come back down again. It's going to go, come back to my body. One, here, take away, pivot up, back down. All right, once I've got a feel of that, nice and simple, I could just go repeat it once or twice. You see people like Justin Thomas, a few of the guys doing this, backwards and forwards. Let's have another crack at this. Repeat it quickly. And away we go. So that is drill number two. Drill number three involves a little training edge. You might not have one of these, but if you, if you haven't got one of these, it's definitely worth a, uh, a pickup. I'll put a link in the description box below, wherever you are in the world. Um, really useful tool. A lot of people have who have had them think they're just like warming up aids, but I, I did at one stage, but this is a great, great training tool tool. Big lump of metal, or big lump of weight at the end. If you start to swing this mass around, it just gives you immediate feedback. Remember the purpose of the backswing. Put the mass in a position that makes it easy to work. Very, very important. Watch this. 
Now, I'll put an, a link to another takeaway video where I talk about the kink in the lead wrist in this top right hand corner, really worth a uh, look. But what I'm gonna do here is look, I wanna manage this mass. So what I do is, is the handle goes down to manage the mass up. Everything, want, the mass always wants to pull the hands up. When the hands come up, it throws the club inside. I'm always feeling that there's a force on the grip end pushing down, holding the mass up in the air. Watch this. So as I take the club here back away, nice and simply, I'm managing the mass, going back here, I'm not allowing the mass to be thrown around. Get a feel for this, don't let the mass disappear, up, pivot it up, then I can literally let rip on the way down. Put the club into position, and then you can give it a rip. Watch the difference here, don't throw the mass around because you're soon you throwing it around. This ham starts to rotate, and we're in out position here. Backwards and forwards, watch the mass, and then away we go. Really great feeling this one. So in summary, three things we've done here. First thing, let's go for what we're after. Checkpoints here, nice and simple. We're taking the club away. We literally want to get club face parallel to spine. We want a coordinated move away. You'll often feel that your lead hand here, your forearm is underneath and your, right, and your trail hand here is more on top. This is quite a nice feeling as you take the club back. You'll see that the grip here is very, very close to your body. These are checkpoints that you want to be looking for, certainly in your takeaway. How do you go about achieving them? Well, three drills. Drill number one, single arm drills, just simply coordinate in motion, keep the book very close to your body here, working the club backwards and forwards, then bring the trail hand in, get a sense of what you're doing. Once you've got that feeling, simply just take the club away, and away we go. Okay, that's drill number one. Pretty good. Drill number two, use an alignment stick. All you're gonna do, drill number two, same principles, nothing really changes. All you're doing here is this. You're literally keeping that alignment stick connected to the body all of the time, going backwards and forwards. It's the same principle, it's just a different feeling. You might prefer this. Get a feel for that. Keep it connected here. Eventually, clear it will go once your hands pass about your trail leg. Once you've got that sensation, don't waste no time. Get yourself set, and again, just hit away. Okay, so, and drill number three basically obviously involves, actually before I go into drill number three, remember with all of this at the moment, remember the rotation, keep the pivot. The overriding factor I see with people rolling their wrists and, and swinging around is their misinterpretation of the golf swing. It isn't a turn, it's a pivot. Yes, of course the guys are turning, it looks like a turn, it is a bit of a turn, but how they achieve that is forces that are going straight back and straight through, we are rolling. Lead shoulder goes down, right uh, trail shoulder goes up. It's a pivot motion, very, very important. Get more details in this video in the top right hand corner. So third and finally, orange whip, just when you've got a big lump behind here, it just helps you start to swing that around. It gets all wobbly, the shaft, it, you react to it. Just get yourself set, work this club away, manage the mass, and then from there, just simply pivot to the top. And then from here, look, just let rip. Get a feel for that, it's as simple as that. Go and enjoy. Now, you know, if you know somebody else who has an interesting looking golf swing, like you heard it, it's possibly coming from their takeaway. So go and share this video if you can. Of course, look, if you enjoy the training, don't forget there's a free practice plan in the description box below. Give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with one of your friends. And if, of course, you're not already subscribed to the channel so I can give you some more content like this next week. But until next week, have a great golfing week.